Hello, avid readers, book nerds, or casual observers. Welcome to the Read Along brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph, and today we're going over chapters 12 through 17 of our read-along for Dragons of Autumn Twilight by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. And this is <laughs> our first attempt at recording from separate locations, because if you've been listening to the podcast, you know that I moved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many miles are between us now and we're doing this? I don't know. A lot. I am in Texas. You are in Nebraska. <laughs> yes, however many <laughs> miles that is. Yes, exactly. But <laughs> so my setup is not one hundred percent where it needs to be. So there might be some weird audio stuff from my end. So if you're listening, uh, bear with me, and hopefully next time it will be better. <laughs> there might yeah, be a little. I mean, this is a a learning curve. And... Yeah, yeah. There might be, a little, might be a little bit of an echo, might be some outside noise. Um, right. Yeah. So. But who knows? My neighbor kids could decide to go out and play on the trampoline again. So it happens. Yeah, exactly. We will see. <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, today we're going through chapters 12 and 17. And mm-hmm. there was a lot of um, crazy... I feel like I said it last time, like, oh, a lot of stuff happened in these chapters, but it's, I mean, six chapters, so I hope so. Um, I hope yeah. a lot of stuff happened. But in this one, it moves there was, really quick. In this one, there was like, oh, okay, <laughs> there's some crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah, a lot of craziness happened in these chapters. It's funny because when we talk about, um, like, when we did our last read through of The Lies of Locke Lamora, we were only reading two chapters right. a week. They were longer chapters. Yeah. Um, and so it, I mean, it, it moved at a good pace and it felt like the appropriate amount of stuff was happening each time we talked. <laughs> right. But now it's like, oh my gosh, we're reading six chapters that are shorter and a lot is happening. Yeah, exactly. Um, especially when you think about like the Fellowship of the Ring, those chapters move really slow. Yeah. Stuff happens, but slowly. <laughs> mm-hmm. The pacing is a lot more... Uh... Yes. Just yeah, it's a little less high intensity at moments. Yeah. Um, like yeah. the traveling, but mm-hmm. this one they kind of. I, I I appreciate how they do the traveling in this one because it's not like you just kind of get the highlights and the mm-hmm. fun character interactions that are happening. Like Flint and Tass are like my yes. favorite <laughs> duo ever. Yes, best duo. Buddy cop movie. <laughs> Flint mm-hmm. and Tasselhoff. Mm-hmm. But, totally. Yeah, so let's talk about what happened in Chapter 12, which I'm assuming yeah. you have the title in front of you because you usually I do. I do. Yes, I have my, my page of notes here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so Chapter 12 is Winged Sleep, Smoke in the East, Dark Memories. So winged sleep, they get a ride on a Pegasus or a group of Pegasuses, also known as a Pegasi. Pegasi, the group of Pegasi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and it turns out that Pegasi um, have a magical ability to put their riders to sleep for their own safety. Which is handy, and I wish... That Southwest Southwest Airlines did the same thing. <laughs> oh my gosh! And American. <laughs> yep. Yes. I wish all the airlines were able to do that. Oh yes. Um, but it's funny because Tannis is like trying to fight it off, right? Was that Tannis? That was Tasselhoff. Because Tasselhoff he was, wanted to stay awake. He was so pumped to be flying. <laughs> he was so stoked. And he, they got up there and he was like, why am I falling asleep? This is so exciting. And they're like, oh, just chill out. Don't worry. This is for your own safety. This is so you don't freak out and fall. (laughs) Right. Which he wouldn't have because he's a kender, but he needed the sleep. He did. Yeah. Um, But it turns out Pegasi did not take them very far. Right. Not as far as they needed to go because they... There was some bad mojo, and they did not want to be a part of it or near it. Right. 
Yeah, the forest master was like, they'll take you to your destination. And then they all wake up and they're like, wait, where are we? We are not where we're supposed to be. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, um, only one of them is left. And he's like, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and flies away. Yep. <laughs> um, he sure does. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, and after he leaves, they notice all this smoke rising from the direction of Gold Moon and Riverwind's village. Right. Yep. So. And Tannis kind of has the group leader responsibility of making sure everyone's not freaking out. But it was just mm-hmm. one of those like, oh, who knows? Maybe they beat them and maybe they beat the bad guys. And those are that's smoke from victory feasts and stuff. And, and they're all just like, OK. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever you say, bro. Yeah. You're no. So full of it right now. <laughs> Yeah. So they make a slight do- detour. It is a little jaunt out of the way um, to check on the village. And what do they discover? <laughs> a very sad scene. It has been destroyed. Yeah. Riverwind and Gold Moon were not having a good time. No, not at all. They're, yep. And especially because Riverwind is also um, feeling guilty. His actions, like the direct consequences of his actions, led to his village getting destroyed. Right. Right. And yeah, which River, which, um, not Riverwind, Goldmoon should feel the same responsibility, but I, I don't know that she does. Maybe. It's unclear. Maybe she mentioned it, but I forgot. But it seems like mostly Riverwind is bearing the brunt of the guilt. Mm hmm. But. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is, such as how these epic quests go, you know. Yeah, I guess. Step on a leaf Although, and the nation falls. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I think it's in the next chapter, though. Um, yeah, so the next chapter's called... Well, okay, so Dark Memories. What was the deal with that? Um, something with Tannis. He's remembering something. Oh, no, it is Tannis. Um, he just... So the last little bit of the chapter is like him remembering how frantically they were all looking through the village for survivors and oh right um, right right that was depressing and so it's like he remembered Gold Moon's frantic search and he remembered standing alone and the cold hand touching his arm and a bunch yeah. of stuff like that and like how sad Flynn looked yeah so those were the dark memories yeah um, and then he went to sleep and had evil dreams. Which seems fitting. As one does. Yes. <laughs> um, so then chapter 13 is called Chill Dawn, Vine Bridges, and Dark Water. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's still, like, a lot of drama and tension between Gold Moon and Riverwind and, like, the whole idea of marriage because she's like, I'm Chieftain's daughter. Or, like, I and he and Riverwind goes, well, now you're the Chieftain now and I'm going to be Chieftain's husband. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, uh, we've talked about this. Like, no. <laughs> Which I don't know why she's making, like, th- they had run off together. Um, so I don't know why she's being so weird about this, really. But Yeah, I wasn't sure if she meant, like, I was confused on whether or not she was being weird because perspective power grab you know, being the spouse of the chieftain, like, does that make him the chieftain if he marries the chieftain's daughter, or does that make her the chieftain? Yeah, you I know? don't know. Or maybe, like, what you're hinting at, maybe it's just like a she doesn't want. Uh, I don't want to label this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not sure what her, why she makes such a big stink, but she does. And, yeah. And then they, like, don't talk to each other for a lot of this section of the book, which is unfortunate as we'll get to. Um, Since they're going through like a shared trauma of their village yes. being destroyed. Yes. Um, and as a result of the, one of their fights, um, Riverwind like stomps off into the forest and he does come back and say that he found tracks of their people. So some of them have survived, which is good. Now he's got to find them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere. That's not one of their um, key motives right now, but I'm sure at some point they will try to find them. Yeah. Um, 
And Riverwind, like, remembers that he's been this way before. He's having some, like, deja vu mm-hmm. um, as they're heading toward Zach's Tassaroth. Zach Zaroth. <laughs> oh, okay. Zach Zaroth. <laughs> Zach Zaroth is what the audiobook calls <laughs> the it. The advantage of listening to it versus reading it yourself. Uh huh. Zach Zaroth. <laughs> Zach Zaroth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, but he's remembering it because that's where he found the staff, mm-hmm. um, which is starting to like come back to him in like little pieces of memories. Yeah. He's apparently blacked out a lot of this adventure. I mean, fair given what we find out later. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, so after this, they start making their way into like a wooded area. Towards, it's, like, it's like a swamp. Yeah. It's like, it turns swampy on them and mm-hmm. it's like foresty swamp and they have to navigate their way over like a vine bridge and this is where we get the really funny flint and tasselhoff right interaction but before before that there's a moment there's another flint moment where he gets stuck in um what they call um they don't call it quicksand they call it something else Fire sand, It's basically maybe? quicksand. I don't know. It's yeah. quicksand. Um, but it reminded me so much of the Princess Bride when they're in the... Um, the fire swamp. The fire swamp, yes. Oh, funny. <laughs> but that was the lightning um, sand or something, wasn't it? Or was it the lightning sand in this? I don't know. It's all quicksand. But the Princess Bride quicksand less. is super fast. You like, right. He doesn't like become submerged but he right. is very stuck in sinking sinking mm-hmm. um and it takes like all of them in a stick to get him out it's pretty entertaining um it was really entertaining and because of that flint is like super disturbed and wet and grumpy and um he's like getting an old man chill because he's an old man mm-hmm. and tannis Asked Tasselhoff if he has anything to warm up their friend. And they're only supposed to have a little bit of the brandy. But they have a good bit of it. And so Flint (laughs) and Tasselhoff are, like, pretty far ahead of the group. They, like, forage ahead and they're totally drunk. Yes. They are. And it's very funny. Very, very funny. (laughs) Talking about what they would do to the next draconian they see. Which is ironic, because they drunkenly stumble into a draconian ambush. <laughs> uh-huh. One just plops down on the vine bridge in front of them. Yep. And, and they try Flint to, falls off. Well, because he tries to drunkenly swing and mm-hmm. totally whips it, and the momentum of the axe takes him off the vine bridge into the swamp. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, which is like a ways down. Oh, yeah. He fell a decent way. I don't remember exactly how far. How far, but but far enough that they're forgotten. Yeah. Um, Because Tass ultimately decides to jump off the bridge. Yeah. To avoid dying. Because he he calls out to the group behind them to say ambush, and then the group behind them catches up and they're freaked out and then the rest of the draconians pop out and they all get bamboozled and captured. Yes. Because there are magic users in the draconians. Mm-hmm. Um, my note on this chapter was everyone rolled low apparently. <laughs> Roll for stealth. Natural and one. And everyone failed. <laughs> Roll for initiative. Natural one. <laughs> yes. Yep. It's a rough time. Um, yeah. So basically, the next the, next chapter, okay. it's just everyone waking up in cages, right? Um. Yeah. So the next chapter is called "Prisoners of the Draconians." Yep. And, um, yeah, because Tass and Flint fell or jumped off the log, <laughs> um, they weren't captured. Mm-hmm. So they're not with the rest of them. They're behind. Um, and it occurs to Tass that they could be walking into a camp of monsters, and he just shrugs it off. He's like, yeah, yeah, whatever's ahead of us isn't going to be any good, but whatever. Who cares? (laughs) Just keeps going. Um, 
And I have a note here that Tass reminds me a lot of Pippin. Like if, yeah. if Pippin were maybe a little smarter. Not that Pippin isn't smart. Or just more fearless. Yeah. Tass is like fearless Pippin. Yes. Yeah. He's definitely got some Took vibes. That's for sure. Very much so. Yes. So as they walk into this um, big group of draconians, um, Tass and Flint see that there is a big old dragon just chilling with the staff in front of it. Sitting perfectly still. Mm -hmm. And Tass isn't scared of it at all. And Flint makes a joke about you should go tickle it with a feather. And Tass is like, I think I will. (laughs) He goes up to it. (laughs) And then it cuts away from Tass and Flint. We don't really know what's going on. Yeah. Um, And we're with the rest of the group. And Raceland has been poisoned. Oh, right. I forgot And seems to be, like, almost dead. And Karaman is super upset and goes full eight mode on the Draconians. He... Doesn't he break out of his own cell? Yes. Which is funny because um, Tannis is like, when Tannis wakes up, he's like, Sturm, Car- Caraman could like totally break us out of here. What are we doing? And Sturm is like, look around. <laughs> we are not in a position <laughs> to just bust out of here. He's like, yes, these um, cages are made out of bamboo. Yes, we are surrounded by a hundred draconians. <laughs> yes. And they all um, hate us and they took our weapons. <laughs> yeah. But Caraman is blinded with rage and doesn't care. Which is a D&D and, thing. Yeah. He went rage. He's a barbarian. He really did. He really did. He did pretty well, too. Yeah, I mean, he broke out of the cage. Didn't he beat... Or he, like, knocked out a couple of them. Mm-hmm. And then the dragon calls for them to bring Caraman to them. Yeah. To the dragon. Um, which... The Draconians are very confused by because the dragon apparently never talks yeah. unless a specific Draconian is also there. <laughs> Convenient. Real sus. Because <laughs> um, apparently there's like different kinds of Draconians too, right? Like there's the right. like the magic-y, priest-y ones. Mm-hmm. And then there's just the kind of grunt ones. And it seems like right. the magic... The, pri- the priest ones kind of have a have a hold over like they're using this whole dragon thing to uh uh fool and hoodwink their less intelligent counterparts <laughs> yes means of control and they're not present so they're not supposed to talk to the dragon while they're not there apparently and then the dragon starts talking which is strange mm-hmm. um and when Karaman is in front of the dragon, he asks to die fighting for with his sword. Like, he knows he's going to die. He just wants to die with some honor mm-hmm. and some bite in him. Which the dragon's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> bring him that his sword. <laughs> and he's like, oh, bring, um, bring his friends out, too. Let them fight, too. Yeah. Um, Let them all fight me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, this is a very entertaining part. Um, it was so funny. Listening to this part was when we were... See, I listened to a lot of this on Audible while we mm-hmm. were driving down to Dallas while I was in the U-Haul. And this part was when we were going through that construction area with the, oh. the pilot car. That like Perfect. <laughs> you had something interesting happening. I know. While you were just stuck waiting. Yeah. So it's kind of nice that I got to just pause and actually focus like really intently Mm -hmm. on what was happening in this part because it was very entertaining because it is revealed when Tannis starts freaking out about how they're all about to die fighting a dragon. He hears Flint whispering off outside the cage. Like it's Tasselhoff. (laughs) Tass is the dragon. (laughs) He's the dragon. It's hollow. (laughs) He went to tickle its foot and discovered it was an animatronic. (laughs) Yeah. Pretty much, like a Chuck E. Cheese dragon. Yeah, yeah. Um, Except it's more like a a Flintstones car. Yeah. You have to have somebody inside Mm -hmm. of it. And there's like a a horn thing for your voice, and there's like 
things that you can use to flap the wings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can kind of fly a yeah. little bit. And so Flint lets Tannis in on their little scheme. Well, mm-hmm. it's all Tasselhoff's scheme. So they all pop out. Yes. They've got their weapons now. They're ready to fight this dragon. And then the dragon, like, roars. Catches on fire. And catches on fire because the <laughs> the wind from the wings is blowing the embers from the bonfire into the homes of the Draconians. And they're all, like, bamboo and straw. They're, like, super yeah. flammable. Yeah. <laughs> and catches all their houses on really fire. Funny. <laughs> and then the dragon roars and crashes into the bonfire. <laughs> Yep. And uh, they end up having to, to save Tass, they pull the whole dragon's head off. And yeah. Tass's legs are like sticking out the neck of this. Sturm, fake Sturm dragon. has to cut the head off the dragon because Tasselhoff was trying to crawl up the neck and out the mouth to escape, but it was too narrow. <laughs> and Sturm has to cut the dragon's head off. And uh. Tasselhoff thought that he cut off his top knot. And was really yes. upset, but he didn't, yes. so it was fine. He but it was just a really He's funny fine. interaction. And this whole thing was funny enough to make Raceland laugh. Yes. Which was disturbing, apparently. Yeah, it startled Tannis. He'd never heard it before. Yeah. But I would have laughed. I'm laughing now. Yeah. <laughs> to see Sturm and Karaman, like, carrying the, this dragon head that's fake with... Uh, Kender legs sticking out the neck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah. entertaining. Um, yeah, and so we should mention that Gold Moon and Flint get Raceland out of there. And they get the staff back. They do. So. And they treat Raceland somehow with the poison. With the staff. Oh, yeah. yeah, they use the staff. They use the staff. So, yeah, they manage to escape from the camp. And then they're on their way to Zakzoroth. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because they've gotten much yeah. closer. Yeah. As is evident by the draconians that they are hanging out with and they make their way to the ruins which is basically just a city that got like doesn't it pretty much look like it got thrown against the side of a cliff like it yeah it's a ruin but like it hasn't just it's not just like wind that has weathered it it's been like Crushed. And messed up. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so that's in chapter 15, which is Escape, The Well, and Death on Black Wings. Mm. Yeah, this is the one that was like, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so chapter 15, um, a lot happens here. Um, at the very big, be- and this is like, I'm going to start looking for this now, because you pointed out in an anime that we were watching... Um, where a character reveals that they like really trust someone <laughs> and you're like, Oh, they're going to die. Yeah. Well, cause you're... So at the beginning of this chapter, Riverwind is like, Tannis, I really trust you and respect you. And Tannis is like, wow, this is a big deal for a barbarian. Like <laughs> he considers me to be his brother now. Right. And then what happens to Riverwind this chapter? Um, let's see the words, uh, S'mores come to mind. Um, Ew. No. Weenie roast. That's too nice. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um. Um, <laughs> let's see. Baked potato. Uh, it's way more disgusting than any of the things that you have said. I know. I know. It's like. Flamethrower. It's like, it's like Anakin at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Yeah. Or like that nasty Titan from Attack on Titan that we watched last night. <laughs> uh, okay, no, um, nothing is that gross. It's pretty close because okay. No, it's pretty okay. People, let's just this let's, is what happens. Let's see what happened. <laughs> There's this well, right? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> very, um, very drums in the deep. <laughs> but like, instead of a creepy girl with long black hair crawling out of it. Like in the ring, um, a literal We're mixing so many metaphors. A literal dragon erupts from the well and roasts after yeah. our boy yeah. Riverwind. Like 
hardcore roasts him. Um, because a little draconian flew down the well mm-hmm. and told this dragon what was going on. Um, so we get to see like the dragon's perspective, which was kind of interesting it was until interesting. it tried to destroy Riverwind. Um, it's like, I wonder if I could kill them all at the same time. <laughs> no, just one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Riverwind is literally described as his eyes melting out of his face and the flesh gone from his torso and Tannis can see his organs pumping. It's disgusting and riverwind is still is alive grasping with his hands like yeah. he is still i mean he's alive but he's definitely i mean i'm sure he felt no pain at that point he was in shock but uh yeah he, he was apparently conscious he was moving right. And Tannis is like, Sturm, you have to put him out of his misery because Tannis is physically ill at the sight of him. Yeah. And cannot deal. And so Sturm goes into his, like, night of salami. Yeah. <laughs> it's not salami, but you know yes, what I'm talking is. about. Mode. And he, like, re, re, you know, says this poem and everything, and he's about to kill him. By the might of Oscar Mayer, I slay thee. <laughs> no, by the might of... Huma. Yeah. Huma the human. Huma salami. He's, he's about to end him. When suddenly, Gold Moon is like, no, bring him to me. Because the whole, and the everyone's whole reason like, the whole reason why Riverwind got roasted was because he was looking mm-hmm. for Gold Moon because she was missing suddenly. Mm-hmm. As this dragon was about to pop out of the well and everyone is like, Riverwind, get down, hide, run away. And he's like, but where's Goldmoon? Where's Goldmoon? And then... We'll uh, get to that in the next chapter. Yes, we will. <laughs> but uh, she's like, bring him to me. And all the dudes are like, no, you do not want to see this. This is this is real bad. Mm-hmm. And Raceland is like, no. Only the gods can decide now. Which I was like, is he implying that... All of a sudden, Gold Moon is a goddess. No, I think he might have known what happened with where she went, or like he might have had some kind of weird like. Right, sense. but I'm saying, is she a goddess now? So the next chapter is called "A Bitter Choice and the Greatest Gift," mm-hmm. and we find out that through this whole thing, Gold Moon was like super drawn to this temple. Mm-hmm. And she heard and, like, felt her mother's voice and presence, Mm -hmm. like, guiding her into the temple, which is kind of sus if you ask me, but whatever. Um, She's standing at the temple door when everything goes dark from the dragon coming out of the well. Mm -hmm. And she can hear Riverwind looking for her. And she, like, decides at the door of the temple. Like, she has to decide if she's going to go in or if she's going to not go into the temple. Mm Mm-hmm. And she ultimately decides she's going to go in. And if Riverwind has to die, she's like, what does she say? Well, basically, she goes in knowing that she may have to sacrifice Riverwind for this choice. Well, it's messed Um, up. It is messed up. Also, you know what else is messed up? While she's having this, like, internal dialogue with her dead mom... (laughs) She's like, I'm 30 years old, mother, 30 and childless. And I was like, you don't got to call a lady out like that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bro, same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Leave me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so while she's in the temple, she um, has a staff with her, and there's a statue of this the goddess of healing. Mm-hmm. And so she returns the staff to the goddess statue. And then we go back to the present time. And she's, like, bringing everyone into the temple. Um, Particularly Tannis. She's trying to show Tannis why she's not worried about Riverwind. Even though Riverwind is... Might as well be dead. She herds them all Um, in, and they have to carry Riverwind in. And then she makes them... Because they wrapped him up in a blanket to, like, protect her. Yeah. From the site. And by the and by the time they get him into the temple, he's like bled through the blankets. That's how bad it is. Ugh. And she makes them take the blankets off. And then she's like, of course, upset because her boy is a mess. 
Um, like, you know when you microwave a hot dog for too long? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, what a terrible image. It's so disgusting. But it's like a hot dog that you had grilled on the grill the night before, and it's like a leftover, <laughs> and then you microwave it too long, and it blows up, but it's still, like, charred on the outside and, like, black. Yeah. But imagine it had organs that were still pumping with blood, <laughs> and that you could see them. It's so bad. It's so gross. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It left a real impression on me. It was really <laughs> I read nasty. It was like this is so disgusting. It was really gross. Oh my gosh. Um, the fire damage from the dragons. It's not no yeah, joke. No joke. Um, so then she uses the staff, and it seems at first like it just put him out of his misery. Like, it just, like, ended things peacefully mm-hmm. for him. But then he speaks, and they're all joyous, and he's alive, and it's a miracle. But he looks like a burnt chicken nugget for the rest of... No, I'm just kidding. No, he doesn't. He looks normal. <laughs> yeah. For it's now. very strange. We'll see. For now. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, and so we find out from Golden Moon that they have a new mission. They need to go to the dragon's lair under the temple... Um, and look for these platinum discs Mm -hmm. of Meshackle. How does the audiobook say the goddess's name? I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, it's M-I-S-H-A-K-A-L. Meshackle? Meshackle? Meshackle. Meshackle. You would think as a fantasy writer that I would have a way easier time with these names, but I just do not. There are some books out there where it's like, how the heck am I supposed to say this name? <laughs> I feel that way about some of my books. <laughs> if I'm being Fair. perfectly honest. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, yeah, this one I, I wasn't sure. Mishackle. Sound, doesn't seem as ethereal as maybe a goddess's name should, but I don't know. Right. Um, and they, they decide to like get some rest while they're in the temple, and they try to to set a watch because the dudes can't bear the idea of not having someone watching their back while they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Sturm gets the first watch and they, uh, we'll just say the goddess makes him go to sleep. (laughs) Yeah. And Sturm was really mad about it. Yeah. He did not like that he he fell asleep on his watch. (laughs) Well, because at first he was like walking around and he, he's like looking in the room. It's not because he's worried, just because he's bored. And then he sits down at the steps of this statue and he nods off and he gets so mad at himself that he's like, no, I'm going to have to walk the entire two hours now with my watch. Um, and they, it still gets him. Yep. It still knocks him out. <laughs> so. <laughs> you sleep now. <laughs> yes. In the next chapter, chapter 17, The Paths of the Dead, Raceland's New Friend. Um, those are two sentences. The Paths of the Dead, period. Raceland's New Friend, period. I love um, this chapter. I did too. But this chapter starts with Tannis being like the last one to wake up and being like super groggy. Yeah. <laughs> so our fearless leader, who's not fearless at all, uh, needed some rest apparently. The fearless leader is Tasselhoff. <laughs> Except not a leader. <laughs> Except he does end up in front of the group a lot because mm-hmm. he's just like because he's the well he's the whatever. rogue, he has to check for traps. Yeah. That's his thing. Gotcha. <laughs> so you know all the D and D character arcs. Exactly. Like yeah, the rogue is yeah. always in the front checking for traps. It's helpful that he's a kender and super quiet. Right. Um. Yeah. So before they get started on their journey, of course, there's more tension between, like. Raceland and the rest of the group because he's revealing that he knows some things about where they are but he hadn't revealed that previously although in his defense there wasn't a ton of time (laughs) right for him to reveal things because they were either like on the backs of centaurs or pegasi or half dead or (laughs) Or mourning the loss of a village or captured by draconians. Right. It's like, when was he supposed to tell you this information, Sturm? I don't understand why you're so upset. He was very upfront and honest about the fact that the information he has might not be of any use at all. Because the information he has is about what the city was like before it got wrecked. And it has clearly been wrecked. Yeah. So... 
I'm going to stand up for him a little bit. Um, Sturm definitely. Of course, Caraman. Sturm definitely has a, like, some kind of weird thing. He really does not like does Raceland. Does not like Raceland. No. But. Um, and so then Caraman's like, hey, you trust me as, like, a brother. And I'm telling you that what Raceland sacrificed is enough. And it's fine. Yeah. If if you can't trust him, I hope that I die and then he dies shortly after. <laughs> Which seems to kind of bother Raceland. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I do think that Raceland is a little shady. And so he's like, oh, don't don't go don't curse me. wishing <laughs> death upon yourself, brother. <laughs> Cause he does I think he does really genuinely care about Caraman's well being too. Yeah. But Yeah. Um <laughs> Um, there's a passing mention in this chapter from Tass about a magic ring that he once possessed, which I just thought was very funny. Yeah, that was a nice little Easter Did you catch that? Yeah. He was like, oh, I, I ever tell you about that ring I used to have? <laughs> it made me invisible. <laughs> he doesn't actually say that part, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. A nice little nod to the Tolkien heads out there. Yeah. Um. It's very fun. Yeah. Um, so they end up in these tunnels, and it's kind of weird. Yeah, so they're trying to navigate their way through the maze, right? To try, <clears throat> yeah, right to try to get to the dragon's lair, and they have no idea where they're going, but they manage to come across these uh, people who. I was really confused on like what I was like, are these draconians? What what is happening? But then yeah. Flint Flint had been has been trash talking this certain group of people called gully dwarves the entire book. Mm-hmm. He hates gully dwarves. So much. And so he just like smells the air. And the audiobook was so funny. It's like gully dwarves. <laughs> he is like so <laughs> mad. <laughs> He is so mad. Well, because it's revealed that he was, like, imprisoned by Goldie dwar- Dwarves for, like, most of the time he's been away from the group. Mm-hmm. And, like, <laughs> and so he has, like... Tan- he's, yeah, like, Tan- why don't you like, tell me? <laughs> what the heck, man? Um, and Flint's like, I, like, I was gonna tell you what was going on. <laughs> um... But he's like, he has such a vendetta against Gully Dwarves that he's like vowed to murder all of them. Yeah. So he's like, grabs his axe and he's like ready to stomp down the hallway and murder all these Gully Dwarves. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. They might be able to tell us how to get to where we need to go. (laughs) So Karaman tries to like intercept the Gully Dwarves and they just like part around him Mm -hmm. and just keep going. And he's like, (laughs) okay. And then they tell him to be quiet <laughs> because <laughs> they're draconian. Because the, big ones. the draconian overlords will. <laughs> well, but they didn't call them, they just called them the big ones. Yeah. Shh, the big ones will hear you. And then they keep going mm-hmm. and they're like, what is happening? <laughs> there was a really funny um, interaction right before that, though, of them trying to convince Flint to go with them oh, to try to like yes. befriend them because Flint yes. was dead set on just killing them all. But mm-hmm. they had to like, reverse psychology him by yes. being like well you refuse to come along and if we don't come along they might they might betray us like who's who's going to be around to keep them in line and you know make sure they don't mess with us or anything yeah and caraman goes it'll have to be Sturm, i guess and flint's like no he will not <laughs> it was very and he grabs his stuff and he starts going it was very entertaining <laughs> It really was. It was um, great. But then, so they managed to catch up with another group, right? Mm-hmm. And this time, Raceland says, don't worry, guys. I got it. And he casts Friends. Which... After? He casts Friends after he does some, like, practical magic tricks with a coin. Oh, you're to right. To get their attention. You're right. He's like, look at this coin. And he, like, makes it pop out of a goldie dwarf's ear. And they all look in the goalie dwarf's ear, like, oh my gosh, where did it come from? He does some, like, close-up magic. <laughs> yes. It's very funny. And yes. then he... classic kid's birthday party mm-hmm. magic. And then he casts Friends, which is an actual D&D spell, where mm. someone is friendly that. towards you for a certain amount of time. I think it's like an hour or something. I don't know. Interesting. Could be wrong on that. But uh, it was really funny. Well, and it could be different in the book. Yeah. 
it was really funny in the audiobook because uh, Raceland's voice normally is like really raspy, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's go this way. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> oh, you will someday call me master. But when he's talking to Raceland's new friends, like in the chapter title, uh-huh. his voice is all of a sudden like, tell me, friend, how can I help? Like his voice all of a sudden becomes yeah. like really creepy, charming. And it was very off-putting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even in the book, like, you can tell, like, the way he speaks is totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, just in reading mm-hmm. versus, like, how he normally... He's, it's, like, saccharine. Like, too sweet. Yeah. He's um, really laying it on thick. Which, like, disturbs Sturm so much. Sturm is like, has he done this to us? Is this why we're hanging out with him? What is going on? <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, no, no, no. He's mean to you guys. <laughs> and you won't know. And the spell doesn't There's last no that There's no hiding long. it. <laughs> no. Um, but so he, he like, beguiles all of these goldie dwarves, and one in particular mm-hmm. named Boo Boo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she is ugly, but very cute. <laughs> I love Boo <Boo-Boo>. Boo. <laughs> I do, too. She's very sweet. Um, she and said, she gives them all kinds of information. When she said her name, who was it that laughed? Was it Tass? No, it was um, Caraman. Oh, right. And then Raceland's like... Caraman tried... Yeah. Raceland's like... Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> Tell me. You don't want to offend them. Tell me. <laughs> offend Uku. them. them. Uku, how do we get to the dragon's lair? <laughs> and, well, he, he, first he's like, do you know where the dragon is? And she's like, you want to go to the dragon? <laughs> yeah. Like, you freak. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. We absolutely do not want to go to the dragon. We just want to know where its lair is. And she's like, oh. And there's, like, this very complicated, like, system of, like, whistles and screaming and buckets and, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm having a hard time envisioning, like, what is happening, except that it's very mechanical in nature. I just pictured it's like um, a, it's like a mining operation. They've got stuff being carried up and down. They've got like lifts yes. and mechanical stuff going on. But they on. use the gully dwarves as weights to like make the buckets go back yeah. down. They're like manual labor and also when necessary inanimate objects. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, they're definitely slaves in this situation. Yeah, yeah. Um and it's it's just like it's so funny that Flint hates them so much cuz they're just so charming i mean they're also like totally under a spell right now Mm -hmm. but the way that they're very endearing like they're they're just like man they're they sure are dumb but i want to i want what's best for them (laughs) which even like i think was it caraman who's like are they even going to know the answer to any of these questions and flint goes oh no if they've seen it they'll know it they don't forget anything they've seen (laughs) If you can just like get, even he has to admit. Like, it's like they never forget they stuff. anything. But if you, it's just a matter of getting them to respond with more than two syllables. That's right. Yeah, that's the key. Which like this this whole section, Gold Moon has been like very quiet, hardly there. Mm-hmm. Like I kind of forget she's even a part of this whole thing. I definitely forgot that her and Riverwind were even there for this chapter. It was kind of yeah. it was kind of Raceland and Flint. Yes. Uh, which I'm and cool a little with. bit of tassel off. Yeah. Because he goes ahead to like try and investigate what's going on, and is still very confused by. Yeah, it is the fun whole to thing. watch. Uh, again, Raceland is still one of the most entertaining characters to read right now. And watching him cast the yeah. spell, and like watching the way his demeanor shifts, was mm-hmm. very was very interesting. So I'm looking forward to yes. seeing what else, what other magic tricks he's got up his sleeves. Yeah. Ooh, you know what else we got in this section? Hmm. Um, Tannis has a thought about an elf maid named Lorana, which I don't think he's ever given her a name before in this book. Right. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope that we actually see her. I think I skipped ahead. Well, I didn't skip ahead. I looked at some of the other chapter titles, and I'm pretty sure she's in a chapter title later on. So, like, I'm pretty sure she's going to pop up. Because I like her. (laughs) I like her. Yeah. She's like the Aowen of this. Oh, I forget that you've read this before. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time. I had forgotten a lot of this. Mm-hmm. I do remember, I did remember 
Boo poo. I did not remember <laughs> how we met her. There's there's a game called Shadow of Mordor, and it's basically it's a Lord of the Rings game where you go around and you've got to like use magic to like dominate these orcs into working for you. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's this inter- interesting like nemesis dynamic where if the orc kills you when you come back to life they like got a promotion and now they're even harder to kill the next time it's it's interesting oh. but anyway whenever yeah. an orc comes on screen like that's your nemesis they'll like announce their name so, <laughs> in like this super deep dramatic voice so I just kept imagining because that's like the kind of name they would have had like yes boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like chanting but, in the background. Boo, 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 boo. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yep. Boo Poo is actually the big bad of this book. <laughs> hey, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe she's smarter than than she lets on. Smarter than Maybe Raceland. she's actually the dragon. Whoa. <laughs> Shapeshifter. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to where the rest of the book takes us. Yeah, me too. So for our next meeting, we will read chapters... Did we say that we read chapters 12 through 18 for this? Because it's definitely 12 through 17. No, we read through 17. I said 17. Yeah, I know. Did you? Okay, I just have another. And then for the next part, are we just going to read through the rest of book one? Or what's... Yes, th- okay. we're going to... Yep, so we're going to stop at book two. Cool, cool. Um, yep. So. Sounds which good. Which is... Chapter 22 is the last one in book one. So you'll read all the way through 22. So five chapters. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to see more of Boo Poo. <laughs> New favorite character. And more Raceland. Yeah, Boo Poo and Raceland. Mm-hmm. The dynamic duo we didn't know we needed. She's just going to hold his hand the whole time. Oh, that's really cute. <laughs> she does. She holds his hand. She like, does. I, for forgot most of the I forgot about She's that. She's just like clinging on to him and leading him down the hallway. And everyone else is like, this is really weird. Yeah. We've never seen anybody act like they actually like Raceland in any way. Except for Caraman. Yeah. But they're brothers, so they're twins. You know, yeah. like he has yeah. to like him. Right. Right. That's how that works. Too funny. So yeah. Looking forward to the rest of it. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So, until then, happy reading. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.